We organize information without even thinking about it. It's not just the act of storing files into different folders, writing down a to-do list, or setting up a planner. The way you create a hierarchy of thought, prioritize actions, create little rituals around your daily routine, are all symptoms of an organized mind. Becoming organized today is getting harder. The amount of information you stumble upon makes it hard to flag information as important or as irrelevant. But it's not just the amount of information you have, it's also how easy it is to access and process. It not only overwhelms you, but gives you a feeling that you have to access everything and take into account the entirety of the data you get in touch with every single day. The problem with unbearable amounts of information is that they drastically undermine your decision making. When you come across multiple options, it's hard to decide which one to take. And the more information and variety you come across, the more you engage in decision making. And this creates something called decision fatigue, which robs you of precious mental power to do other more interesting things. However, the problem is not the wealth or amount of information being pumped at us. It's the fact that we haven't developed systems to organize it. This is the main concept behind a book called The Organized Mind by Daniel Levitin, and I hope I'm not butchering his name, who has a PhD in psychology and who is specialized in behavioral neuroscience. The book is divided into nine main chapters. Part one talks about what's behind cognitive overload and how attention and memory work. Part 2 has a more detailed structure on how to organize your home, your social world, your time, information for decision making and the business world. For the purpose of this specific video, we will be covering the principles that can be applied to all of these chapters instead of delving into specific areas to organize, but you can always get your organized mind to have a more detailed explanation on how everything works. If you want to get it for free, I'll explain how you can do that in the end of this video. The organizational system mentioned by the author has crucial building blocks that allow you to filter through what's non-essential and organize the data that you access every day. One of those building blocks is categorizing. Categorizing is a form of cognitive economy. You treat things as being of a kind, so you don't have to waste time on details that are irrelevant to your goals. The good news is that we all have an intuitive sense of what constitutes a category and how well something fits into that category. That category is then formed based on gross or fine appearance. Gross appearance is recognizing that a bunch of documents are receipts. Fine appearance separates your receipts from relating to personal purchases, to business, to utilities. Some of these categories can be harder or easier to separate, but the goal here is to recognize the main features of the data you're treating and then be able to tell whether you need to go in deeper and start sorting those main features through other criteria. The curious thing is that people who are on top of their game are used to this without even thinking about it. This is the so-called active sorting, the way you separate things you need to deal with with things you don't, without giving it too much thought. Active sorting can be translated into a system that a lot of you are familiar with, the Eisenhower Matrix. It's the organizational system that breaks down tasks into urgent and important, important but not urgent, urgent and non-important, and then non-urgent and non-important. Some people can do this breakdown instantly when they come across the relevant data. Other people have to use another building block to do this exercise, a brain extender. A brain extender is a calendar, a smartphone, a time management app, or a notebook. These are systems of attention and memory that are external to your brain, but are built to be accessed by the brain at all times. As such, the information you type or write down in these brain extenders needs to have the same language as your internal organization and categorization system. This is why you hear a lot of the time that, when you're planning, you should use simple language. This is because your thoughts are usually not very complex, and the way your brain processes information and organizes it doesn't use fancy words or formulas. Then you have the famous brain dump, the thing you do when you have to clear your mind. It reads your brain of any clutter that's in your head and gives you the space to focus on what you want to focus on. That is why that when you make a huge list of all the tiny things you have to do, you tend to feel more relaxed than stressed. 
When there's something important on your mind that is not using a brain extender, you're afraid you'll forget it, so your brain rehearses it and tosses it around in circles, in the so-called rehearsal loop. The rehearsal loop is usually effective, but it actually forces you to spend a lot of energy in trying to remember something, and then you don't have the mental energy to do other more demanding tasks. Some items in your brain dump may be things that you believe you're able to do at the same time, like working on a project while you're hearing a podcast, or trying to read your textbook while TV is playing in the background. But, as you've probably heard before, multitasking has metabolic costs. It takes a lot of energy to shift your attention from task to task. People who organize their time in a way that allows them to focus are not only going to get more done, but they'll be less tired and less neurochemically depleted after doing it. Also, multitasking disrupts your problem-solving capabilities as well as creative thinking. And if the task at hand requires a multi-part sequence, the need to avoid multitasking is even greater. These sequences require a proper temporal order, something we can easily transport to a workflow in business or a project for college. So if you have a long-term project or tasks that need to be accomplished, it's not enough to write down that you need to complete it. You have instead to break it down into parts and import it into a more complex organization system. A multi-step project needs to be broken into dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of small tasks. I'm pretty familiar with this now since I think that planning for a wedding means breaking everything down into hundreds of tasks, and I'm not even kidding. But breaking a project down into tasks isn't enough. You also need to stop the work you're doing and view it objectively and make sure that you're carrying out everything properly and are happy with the results so far. This is mentioned a lot in the SMART method for achieving goals, which we've discussed in a previous video, and is also the main principle behind scheduling weekly or monthly review sessions for your planning methods and your goal setting strategy. This will allow you to make any necessary adjustments and then just push forward until you reach the end of your project. And as you know, planning to do something isn't the same thing as doing it. Some people are great with planning and have a wide view of important timeframes, goals and projects. But other people are terrible at planning and are great at doing things in the moment. They have great focus, creativity and problem-solving skills. The thing is, planning and doing actually require separate parts of your brain. The brain basically shifts its attentional set from planning and having attention to details and progress to actually doing. Once again, some people are great at doing this shifting and other people not so much. This is why there are simple rules that people can follow to remember to shift their attentional set more easily, like batching similar chores together, using the two-minute rule, focusing on one task at a time, or providing slots in your schedule to devote time to one task only. These are all ways that allow you to get more done in an organized way. Something similar to the way a manager and their worker go through tasks that need to be done. All in all, there is one main factor that leads you to procrastinate on your tasks. When choosing what tasks to undertake, you tend to choose the easiest and not the one that rewards you the most. This means that complex and long-term projects tend to fall down to the bottom of your to-do list and spread out far longer than they should. You do this actually because your human brain has low tolerance for frustration, so it naturally picks activities that do not cause that frustration, something that you can easily associate to more complex tasks that need to be tackled. And the thing is, sometimes that frustration is not in the nature of the task itself, but on how negatively you portray what you have to do. Most decisions can be reduced to a choice of four simple actions – drop it, do it, delegate it, or defer it in time. The indecision, tied to the negative concept you give the task, is what makes you procrastinate on doing something. And sometimes, all you have to do to push forward on your progress is not aiming for perfect results, but rather practicing satisficing, a decision-making approach that aims for acceptable or good enough results, rather than optimal solutions. All of these principles can be applied to how you manage your home, your social relations or your business. If you are enjoying this breakdown and want to know more about how to get more organized with more specific tools, you can listen for free to The Organized Mind using today's sponsor, Audible, by visiting audible.com slash Mariana or text Mariana to 500, 500. 
Your subscription will also give you access to two Audible originals as well as one title per month of your choice, and if you cancel Audible at any time, the library of audiobooks you've purchased will be yours forever. Start listening with a 30-day Audible trial. Choose one audiobook and two Audible originals absolutely free by visiting audible.com slash Mariana or text Mariana to 500 500. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you next week. Bye guys!